Welcome to the IBL uh, booth here at SMT Hybrid Packaging. I'm joined by uh, Florian Wust, uh, who's the product manager. Uh, welcome, Florian. Welcome, Trevor. Hey. So, we're here to look at uh, your latest new machine, actually, uh, uh, on the vacuum soldering system, uh, which uh, uses the vapor phase. So, it's, a, it's the VAC 745. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, vacuum soldering is everywhere now because of the, the uh, number of uh, components with uh, under terminations uh, that need to uh, outgas, etc. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your system and how it works uh, and uh, basically the, the advantages of it. Yes, so the Vacuum 745 um, is a batch system. We stand in front of it. It's also available as an inline system for automatic loading and unloading. Uh, we have a second model, a bigger model with a ca bigger carrier size. It's a Vacuum 765. And like you already said, okay, it's, the industry goes more and more in direction of vacuum. Mm -hmm. I already told you before, we already started 2004 with the development of our vacuum vapor phase system. And uh, a few years later, we um, shipped the first systems to our customers. So we have a huge experience mm -hmm. today with the vacuum process. And um, this machine has a few patented systems integrated. First of all, um, first big patent, what we released is the in-vapor technology. And in-vapor technology means that we do the evacuation, the vacuum inside the vapor phase zone. So directly after the boards reach the peak temperature, inside uh, the vapor phase area, we can start with the evacuation. So we don't lose any time there. Product stays in an oxygen-free atmosphere from reaching the peak to the vacuum and also doesn't lose any temperature. And that's well established today uh, on the market. So we have a lot of customers which are using these kind of uh, vacuum machines and uh, uh, are realizing superior results there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fairly unique uh, way, uh, as I say, you take it into the chamber uh, and bring it up through a couple of phases to, to peak reflow and then slide uh, the vacuum chamber across and evacuate the, the, the air. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, it really is a, a fairly unique uh, and fairly fast system uh, for, for doing this. I mean, what's the cycle time on your, on your vacuum side? So the cycle time for a complete workpiece carrier, which is usually capturing a few PCBs, is six minutes. But um, last year we released a new system, an inline system. It's the XI series, where we have two carriers, two workpiece carriers, which are circulating in the machine. So while we are doing one process, like a soldering or the vacuum, we can already load. The machine is already loading the next carrier. And while the first carrier is in the cooling zone, we, we uh, um, process the next carrier. So uh, this is something where we can increase the throughput up to 70% then. And, and uh, fast is the uh, right word because one thing what at the beginning most of the customers didn't really recognize is the vacuum is always increasing the time above liquidus. And you know like IPC usually says okay the maximum is 90 seconds time above liquidus and um, there you have to choose a machine which is uh, realizing the shortest process time and also can realize a fast cooling. And we have a fast cooling system, the rapid cooling system, also we have a patent on. Um, and also the fact that right after we reach the peak, or the board reach the peak temperature, we can start with the evacuation, mm -hmm. is giving the best possibilities to shorten down the time above liquidus. And uh, this is how we usually realize the time above liquidus below 90 seconds with vacuum on standard FR4 applications. Right, yeah. right. I just just to clarify one of the points you made there that on the dual carrier system that's on your inline system because you you do both inline systems and and batch, yes. uh, so yeah. so uh, I just wanted to make that point clear. Now you got a, a very unique uh, process here. Uh, yeah. Let's start by going through it step by step. I mean, you you're able to do first of all you're able to do uh, profiling in real time. Exactly. So what you see here first of all that's the workpiece carrier uh, where we capture the boards. And um, on the right side of the workpiece carrier, we have a TE adapter where you can plug in the temperature sensor from the product directly here to the machine. So you plug in like a, a type K sensor and then you will see the temperature curve live on our controller here. So here we have a 15 inch uh, HMI controller with an integrated Windows 7 PC. So we are automatically saving, recording and saving each cycle uh, on the PC or on a network. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here you see a curve, that's the board temperature for example. What we can also uh, plug in is um, the pressure, for example the pressure of uh, the vacuum system, vacuum chamber, and we also have a machine sensor 
which is installed at the transport system. This is a, what we call automatic sensor, it's for the process regulation, because this machine has an automatic temperature regulated process. So it will react on how many boards are laying on the carrier, what is the mass of these boards, and it, this temperature regulated process makes sure that the preset temperatures, for example here, um, the soak temperature of 160 degrees will be realized independent of the uh, load of the machine. So if you have one board on, two boards, or four boards on, and that's quite important for a vapor phase machine which is working with workpiece uh, work carriers. These boards could be different densities as well, so um, it, yeah. makes a, it makes allowance for this. Yeah. And that's something what we learned over the last, yeah, we do vapor phase now since 30 years, uh, my company here. Um, so we learned that with customers' experience. The repeatability, flexibility, repeatability is more and more important, and uh, I think without those, uh, features you 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 can't serve the customers' needs today. Yeah. Now, now, now vapor phase has been obviously around for a long time. It went through a phase many years ago where, you know, uh, it went out of fashion because it was hard to handle, it was expensive, etc. It's had a resurgence in the last few years uh, because it's easier to use now uh, and it's much more controllable. But the key reason people really move to to, to vapor phase is for real high quality homogenous uh, 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 soldering systems. Mm -hmm. What sort of people uh, are using it? When does it become the product of choice uh, for reflows, for soldering? Yeah, yeah. we started um, in 87, our owner released the first uh, uh, vapor phase system. And today our customer base is mainly in the industry of uh, aerospace, uh, satellites for example, um, then the uh, automotive industry, but also medicine industry, but also standard industry and uh, mainly also EMS provider. EMS provider is a big customer base of, of us because um, they, they really like the flexibility of our systems. We have systems, they have a quite small footprint, like a batch system with a small footprint but with a huge and high flexibility. Right. So you can realize each kind of solder profile there, you can even serve different uh, uh, alloys, so different peak temperatures. You have no change over times, like in a convection reflow, for example. Um, so that's something what our customers really like, because yeah. they can have one batch system, one vapor phase batch system, for example, to serve all their needs. Mm -hmm. And then, in addition today, also the, the, the vacuum soldering, um, to also offer the vacuum uh, to their customers, or uh, for OEMs, uh, uh, OEM companies, for example, which need vacuum soldering, like power electronic soldering. Yeah. Right, okay. So it's used in high reliability applications. Mm. Automotive, is that one of them? Absolutely, yeah, yeah sure, sure. What about uh, going into uh, standard applications where it's not so much high reliability? Is it, is it um, something that's economical to do? Yes, also. It's always the question um, which you compare with. The, for example, the convectional reflow, if it's used with uh, nitrogen flooding, um, we are uh, uh, really competitive. Because one thing, what I didn't mention, is um, in the vapor phase area, you don't have oxygen. So we have an oxygen-free atmosphere without the need of nitrogen. So if we compare with a convectional reflow uh, with nitrogen flooding, uh, the running costs usually are lower with a vapor phase system. Yeah. So, and I think one thing I forgot to mention on the vacuum when we were talking about that is that you don't have to use the vacuum, you can use it as a conventional system uh, without the vacuum, depending on the product you're making. Exactly, yeah. If you have a vacuum machine, you can also just switch off the vacuum and uh, then you can just run a, a standard vapor phase process. And actually, that's also something what uh, uh, some customers do. We have more and more customers, they buy a vacuum machine, but they don't need it at the moment. Right, yeah. right. Because they think, okay, they may need it in the future. Uh, the lifetime of such a machine is uh, above 10 years. So we have machines out there, they are already 15 years old and the customers are still soldering. So if you buy a machine today, uh, usually you, you already think about, okay, buy a vacuum machine, maybe because I need it in the future then. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, the vacuum machines that are in the market, uh, the, the reason people are, are buying them obviously is, is for outgassing of the undeterminated components like VGAs, etc. Um, typically, the, 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 the thought in the industry is that you have to use a combination of the, of the, the mechanical vacuum uh, and the, the chemistry, the flux chemistry, mm -hmm. uh, to, to get the optimum results. You're telling me what is the best results that you can achieve uh, if you're using the right flux chemistry? So, 
this is the experience from our customers. Um, and usually you can come down to 0% or 1% of voiding. So if you do everything right, if you have the right uh, uh, combination out of the right flux, um, you take care of moisture sensitivity and all the things around, um, for sure with a vacuum machine like this, you will be able to reach the best results. And um, the other thing, what you have to make sure is that you have a machine, a flexible machine, where you can realize all kind of different solder profiles. Mm -hmm. because. It's also important to give the flux the time to activate, for example, and that's this zone here. So you have to have a machine where you can have a reliable um, or repeatable solder process, and if you set up a specific profile, that the machine makes sure that this profile has been realized in each cycle. And that's what we serve you with uh, our system here. Excellent. Okay. Well, Florian, it's a, it's a great system, uh, and uh, I want to thank you for showing it to us today. Thank you, too. I wish you a good day.